talking about food that comes from the supermarket. We're talking about bloated up, oversized food that no longer contains its essential poisons. And that's what we're lacking. Without those poisons, here's what happens. Diabetes. Cancer. Heart disease. Right? Does that make sense? Where do all these diseases come from in the last 50 years, suddenly, out of nowhere, that are being blamed on us as they're called genetic? Oh, it's your fault. It's genetic. It's your parents' fault. It's genetic. It's not. It's that your alkaloids, which cause your body to become strong enough, feral enough, wild enough, in order to get rid of those kind of pathogenic situations, it just becomes impossible for you without those essential poisons. So I want to be clear, you can get that stuff in wild food, you can get that stuff in herbalism, you can get that stuff in superfood. Start looking. Let's go to the next level. If we can step up past that organic food situation and go further, then we can go to the next level beyond. I don't know what that is yet. I haven't been there yet. I'm trying to anchor this idea in, but we can go further, 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 all the time. Faster. More. So let's do that. Let's go further. That makes sense to everybody? Well, Daniel, how do we start, like, somebody who's in a city, for instance, how do we actually get wild foods? Can we grow them even in our own home? No. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. No, you start with herbalism, and you start with superfoods. And you start looking around, and you start to find foods that have active components still in them. Start to have active components still in them. This is really what I think, and I mean, you know, I'm the guy, I'm the edgy one who, I mean, you know, I'm going to push you guys a little far here, but if you're living in the city... If you're living in the shitty, <laughs> this might be the time in human history to start looking at that and start thinking. If you're really committed to this lifestyle, you might want to be making a plan over time to get yourself into an environment that supports the lifestyle you might really want. If you want abundant health, it's going to be difficult to maintain it deep in the cities, deep in the heart of the cities. It's going to be a challenge. Why? Well, there's no, there's no water. And there's, there's no earth. And there's no good air. And there's no fire. You can't even have a fire. So the elements are not present. So you can't integrate with the elements. Now, if you're not integrated with the elements and the transmutation of the elements, in other words, the seasons, then you're working against nature. And if you work against nature, you're not going to last long. That makes sense? So the city might not be the place for this. But if that's where you are, that's where you start. Start with herbalism. Start studying herbs. Start using herbs. Keep doing, keep staying on this program. Stay part of this community. Start using these superfoods. Start working your way backward towards the wild again, towards becoming feral. If you can, in the summertime, take a wild food course. They happen all year long. Just look around. Get on your community bulletin boards. There's wild food walks all the time going on, and that's where I learned. I got a tremendous amount of knowledge about wild food that came in the last few years of me just getting out there and taking walks, learning, getting some field guides. If you live in the city, take outings. You've got national parks right outside your city, right? You can go out there, and you start learning. Start finding out. Start studying. Start learning some primitive skills. Now is the time. Now's really the time. Could be a critical time. Could be a critical time. So a lot of you grow are going to be less potent, but you have more control. Now, growing food is fantastic. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not an agrarian. I'm wild. And, you know, my environment is in the forest, and I know that. I'm not an agrarian. I'm not a farmer. But many of you might feel very connected to that, and that's fantastic. You have control. But a farmer does not grow the stuff in the supermarkets. That food is swag. Farmers grow heirloom crops. What's an heirloom crop? An heirloom crop is where you plant something and you take the seeds from the best thing you grew and you grow that the next year and then you take the seeds from the best one and you grow that again on and on and then you give that to your children and they pass that seed on and eventually your family has a specific lineage, a specific genetic of each plant specific to your family. It's your heirloom. Your family heirloom. Like a bank account, like a dowry. You can still get heirloom seeds but you know what? They're going fast. Get online and buy heirloom seeds and pack them away. Get some. Now's the time to get them. Nor Norway's packing them away in a giant cave. And Duke for Monsanto actually uh, trademarks them and makes them illegal to own. Understand that Pretty genetically good. modified oh, organisms have been released into the environment. You know that there's a, there's a rice now that contains human genes. There's to I mean, come on, you guys know this, right? There's tomatoes that have what genes? Fish. Fish. You know, soybean genetically modified now, and the soybeans that aren't genetically modified are becoming contaminated by the, you know, by the pollen of genetically modified ones. So we need to pack away those, those heirloom seeds, and if you're going to grow, you need to actually have good seeds to start with. 
I want to mention something too for us city dwellers. I'm a city dweller. David Wolf, for a good part of every year, is a city dweller as well. Um, I can tell you from personal experience that it is actually possible, with the right intention and right motivation and commitment to living like this, to add a lot of wild foods. You can find wild foods almost everywhere. In fact, there's a wild food trek right down the road here in Thousand Mills. Yeah, there's a wild, there's wild food walks in New York City. But we can go out to New York City and they put a meal together. Now, <clears throat> that's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is learning again. You know, the Mayans abandoned their cities. There's a lot of cities like that in the world. Perfectly functioning cities all over the ancient kingdom that we go, where did the people go? One day they just left. They just left. Who wants to, who wants to do that? So, we, I want to do that. And I think we're going to do that. Slowly we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to back out of what we've created. But those of us who are the leaders got to anchor in where the food comes from, how to get it, how to grow it. If you're going to grow it, Get on the real techniques. Learn how to grow, get good seeds. Learn how to work with soil, right? It's not, you know, we're not talking about the genetically modified cheap, you know, seeds from the store. I want to anchor that in. Wild food is really where it's at. Wild food has medicine in it, and more than anything, wild food has chi in it. It has chi. Why? Because it can survive in the wild. What's the chihuahua do in the wild? It's eaten. <laughs> what happens to a tomato plant you try to put out in the wild? Can't survive. Wild food can survive in the wild because it has enough chi, it has a defense system, it has an immune system. It can survive and thrive in the elements. We actually absorb that chi, it becomes part of us. That Remember that all life force in the whole universe is simply recycled. All the arguments of like, oh, we shouldn't eat that because it's, it's you know, if that harming that organism, or we should, you know, come on, all chi, all the same force that animates me animates all of you. And it animates every blade of grass and every plant. Every animal is animated by the same force. And that force is just passed around as one organism eats another organism and all organisms eat other organisms. Life feeds on life. And that's a beautiful thing. It's not a dark thing. It's not a scary thing. It's beautiful. But we're so out of touch with where our food comes from that some of us get uncomfortable with the idea that organisms eat other organisms. It's not something to be uncomfortable with. That's beautiful. Life recycles itself. And the more chi in the thing you eat, the more chi in your body. And if you get enough chi in your body, you become invincible. Your health becomes invincible. So that you're no longer concerned about being sick, all the diseases begin to fade away, and you begin to become fearless because you know you've got enough chi radiating from your body that's just like a force field that nothing can penetrate. I think also, Dana, we need to add that it doesn't take a lot to really cultivate our chi and to protect it. For instance, a few sips of a real powerful tonic, something that Truth Hawkins makes, I mean, that could have a dramatic influence on your life, even if you don't change any other aspect of your diet at all. So little changes do have a profoundly important and big effect on our lives. Long yeah, exactly. And it's not about, oh, i got to bring in 600 new herbs into my life. Bring in one. Bring in two. Start experimenting with them. Each one is going to add a new medicine to your body, and that's what's going to heal you. And you know, all this blended drink technology, amazing. It's amazing. Why? Because it gives you a vehicle to begin to deliver this stuff into your body. I'm not saying like go out and get on all fours and start eating grass. What I'm saying is piece by piece, back your way back into a, the most natural connection with your environment that you can get. And I told you wherever you go. I travel a lot, Dave. We, we roam all over the world. You know, I was in Paris last week. Dave's been, I don't know, 30 different places in the last 30 days, literally. And he brings this technology everywhere he goes in you know little vials, little you know little contraptions he carries around with them, and it doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little bit of attention, a little bit of commitment. Everybody, bring.